You toured overseas a little bit, um, so that guitar, I assume you took this that This guitar went everywhere with me, every gig. I toured Europe and Asia with it, and toured uh, Greenland, the Caribbean. Uh, used to do a lot of stuff for the military troops, mm -hmm. and I did some off-base stuff too, you know, some little oh. pubs and stuff, but large majority of it was uh, military bases. And How about Turkey? You didn't play it. any clubs in Turkey, did you? Yeah. You did? Yeah, I loved it. That'd be interesting. I was treated, I mean, we were treated... I uh, had a, had a uh, four fi uh, five piece band with me over there, and we were treated great, man. We they loved us. Yeah. Uh, we loved them. It was the night. Everybody was nice. The women were beautiful. And the gold was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a great trip. Uh, and um, yeah, I loved it over there. I mean, I'm sure I probably wouldn't want to live there. I've, we did get a chance to see. I had a. Uh, I've been meaning to write a song about this, but we saw an episode. We were in this jewelry store. Gold's really cheap there. It's like a $500 gold bracelet here would be like 80 bucks over there. Wow. It's really cheap. It's high grade gold too. And um, we were in this jewelry store and <laughs> we came out. We had our gifts and stuff. We were, had bought our family and whatever. And we saw this. We saw this guy inside this jewelry store. We thought he might be shoplifting because he kind of looked kind of you know sketchy, you know. But we didn't pay. And it wasn't any of our business. So. Sure enough, he came out of the store, and the store owner came out, and he's like, "Hey, you know, whatever he was saying to him." And the guy was denying stealing anything. Like we could, you know, figure out what was going on. And anyway, so he calls the police and asked him to empty his pockets, and he wouldn't. So anyway, they patted him down and found all this jewelry and stuff. And the guy started resisting arrest. These cops, and this is, the, I think, this is the way we should be over here. But we sit and watch it from across the street. This guy had an M16 around his thing, the cop did, you know, he was driving a little Datsun B210 or something, you know, the da -da 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 -da, you know, and he it's takes like his, he takes his gun off and puts his gun on the hood, on the top of the car, and he goes over here and grabs this guy by the ear, and le and puts him in that police car by the ear, Wow! and he puts his gun back on, he gets back in the car and drives away with him, the old like, spot trick, oh, man. I'm like, that's how it's done, <laughs> wow, yeah, exactly, yeah. But that was kind of cool. I liked I liked Europe. I loved it. I, I, I wouldn't mind going back over there. How long ago was that? Uh, that was uh, 97, 98. I did about two months over there. Well, when did you share the stage with Jimmy Buffett? And oh, that was in 95. That's kind of got a strange story. Uh, uh, I used to do a lot of shows at Blockbuster, some openings and some side stage stuff. I did probably 50 shows out there over about a four or five year period. and. Uh, Got to know the staff real well and got to know everybody, the production manager and everybody. I had already knew the production manager, as a matter of fact. It was a guy named Calvin Hunter. And uh, he called me one day and said Buffett was in town and would I come out and, and participate in this contest? And I said, okay, whatever. He said, you'll get two free tickets to the show. I said, great. I had never seen Buffett before. And so you got to get, you got to get on the stage prior to the show and and play some guitar and the crowd was in it rained that day and it was hardly anybody there but I knew everybody the staff and everybody and it, we went by crowd response so I won this contest oh. <laughs> and uh, so, you know. so I got to play cheeseburger in paradise with Jimmy Buffett all right cool. but it looks good on the bio though don't oh, it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. yeah Jimmy Buffett doesn't say how I got up hey there, you played it? with Jimmy Buffett I that's, played with Jimmy Buffett on in front better. of about 25,000 so that was fun okay. it was fun he was a nice guy I really enjoyed that. He sent me a, sent me a uh, VHS tape of the whole thing, and uh, he mailed it to me. And I thought, yeah, you're gonna mail that to me, and he mailed it to me. Yeah. Pretty cool, you know, full production with the backup singer. That is good. Yeah, that was pretty neat. And there you are. Mm, yeah. Who else have you been on stage with? Uh, I did a lot of openings, you know, over the years. We've opened for, and, so, and some some in other bands as well. I mean, we've opened for. Blue Oyster Cult, back in, you know, in my teens, you know, I had a band called Stone Blue, it was a rock band, you know, not metal, like was popular in those days, but just a rock and roll, we used to do fog hat tunes, and we had our own co our own originals and stuff too, but we used to open it for like Mother's Finest, Night oh, yeah, Ranger, band. Uh, Quiet Riot, remember all those bands, yeah. uh, 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 who else, Fabulous Thunderbirds, opening up for those guys. Uh, but just a bunch of different ages. This is when you were a teenager. Well, teens, early 20s. Yeah. I think I left that band on my 20. Yeah, my, my last gig with that band was on my 21st birthday. Right. You know, and uh, we were together. We were together for about five years, and we used to do a lot of openings and stuff. And and then here recently, over the past f a few years, I've did shows with Cracker, um, uh, G Love, and Special Sauce. You know. Uh, a lot of them I didn't feel like I mixed quite well with, but you know, 
I guess they felt like I was, uh, you know, versatile enough to cover it. So, you know, maybe they couldn't get anybody else covered. But like the cracker gig, I really didn't fit in there. <laughs> I got some bad hacklers in the audience, you know. But uh, sometimes it seems like the openers are not are set up to be very different from. The sometimes, yeah. I mean, look at the Beatles and the Monkeys thing, you know, from back in the '60s. You know, you know if I guys heard that story, you know, Jimi Hendrix got booed off the stage opening for the Monkeys in Charlotte back wow. in the '60s. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard that. Yeah, so go figure. Yeah. Or look at the Monkeys now. Look at Hendrix. You know, he's an icon. Whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, let's hear another song. Okay. This one kind of goes with. Well, is this is old guitar? Is it about? Oh, I remember this, this guitar. One. It's about actually the musician's yeah. plight, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a lament to the working musician. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I I think I wrote it on the old Gibson guitar, even though I don't play it a whole lot. But it can be about this one this time. <laughs> this guitar here. It's all. It's, it's called old now. guitar. Yeah. So much can happen in the blink of an eye Green turn to red, then your life passed you by Spending all your time with your hand in the jar Sitting in a corner with that old guitar A young man is pretty, but he ain't got a clue Time turns old, oh then what do you do? yourself sleeping in the back of your car trying to make a living with that old guitar yeah sometimes i wonder is this all there is or oh, will i ever make it in the music biz cause there ain't no benefit no guarantee when there's a hundred other pickers playing just like me yeah Playing just like me every night and day somewhere out on the street This is Words and Music. Our guest today, Chris Cook. What a pathetic song. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sad, morbid. You yeah. were down that night, but uh, yeah. I think we've all been there one yeah. time. Or yeah, you start wondering, you know, if, you know, there's no guarantees in doing music, art. Exactly. Right. I mean, you find yourself, you know, you can find yourself 60 years old and it never happened for you, you know, that's just the risk you take, you know. Mozart was buried in a pauper's grave. They yeah. didn't know where he was buried. Yeah, I mean. And he wrote a few good tunes. Yeah, he had a, he had a, he had a, you know, he had one he had a good run maybe. maybe. <laughs> and he probably asked himself similar questions. I'm yeah. sure he did, <laughs> you know. Yeah. No doubt. Well, I want to catch some of it while I'm alive, you know. Right. I, don't want to, I don't want to have to die to be popular. <laughs> right. but, uh, well, Chris, we've really enjoyed you. I music. appreciate it. I've show. enjoyed having you. Thank um, you. I've enjoyed having you guys on my show. <laughs> we haven't really uh, yeah. sprung this on you yet, but we usually try to close the show with what we call a classic cover okay. of words of music. Classic. Right. Maybe we can talk a little bit and we'll be back. come back and uh, Great. Play, sounds, sounds play that words of music classic. So Before stay with we us. do that, well, let's get your website. <laughs> Let's get your okay. website address so people can, can find we get your zoomed gig in dates on, and that good on, stuff. On my face. There we go. www.chriscookmusic.com. <laughs> no e on that cook. Some other Chris Cook got your dot com, didn't he? He got my dot com. I had a fill up get mine. He got my Chris Cook dot com, but I got I ended up with the Chris, Chris Cook, Cook Music, music which yeah. that, works. that works. Works yeah. well. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. well, well, we'll be right back with some more words and music. Stay with us. <laughs> 